Hello there, friends. It's so good to see you again. Um, time for another tea together as we get ready to uh, look at this week's Bible study, week number two. Uh, and so we have our study. We're continuing the worldwide church in um, amidst um, a worldwide pandemic. So um, being the worthy ship. And today we're going to be learning about why the church is known as the worthy ship. Let me take a cup, a little sip of tea and we'll get started. Mmm, delicious. So, the article I'm going to share with you this week, this, this article is not homespun. The questions that go with it are, but um, I have given you all the... Um, the information of where it comes from. It comes from Faith and Leadership Issue, Monday, March 10th, 2014. It is an article titled, It's Not a Ship, It's a Boat, by Reverend Mark Rawls, who happens to be a senior pastor at First United Methodist Church in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Um, and I shared with you in, in the email I sent you the beautiful stained glass window from their church. I do not have a color printer, but if you do, it's it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and that was my inspiration for giving you the arts and crafts projects of the stained glass window coloring of the ships. So you have another one this week that you can do. So let's take a look and begin. Uh, Pastor Rawls says, a family cruise to Alaska left a landlubber pastor confused about seafaring lingo from starboard to port. But on his point, he is certain the church is not a ship, it's a boat. Last July, he says, three generations of my family went on an Alaskan cruise together. It was great fun. But as a lifelong landlubber, I had trouble using the correct seafaring lingo. I kept calling our cabin a room and inviting family members to come to the more hardcore nautical terms like starboard and port. I didn't have a clue. I usually just pointed. Yet my biggest indiscretion and the one that drove members of my family crazy was my tendency to mislabel the vessel itself. Every time I called it a boat, my father would cringe. It's not a boat, he would say politely. It's a ship. Using the proper word matters, not only for sailors, but also for the followers of Christ. A boat, for instance, is a favorite symbol for the church. Like many other churches, the one that I pastor has a stained glass window depicting a wooden vessel with a sail. It is there to remind us of an ancient symbol for the church, signifying a vessel of salvation. The boat was often used to portray the church. The old image still resonates in the word we use for the central portion of a sanctuary, the nave. The Latin word for ship is navis and for boat, navicula. I think it must have been the latter, a mere boat, that the early church had in mind. Whenever I look at the window of our church, I am always struck by how small the vessel is. We are meant to gaze upon that window and ponder how a church is less like the mighty vessel we call a ship and more like a humble boat with a mast and sail. The church as I have experienced it is not a cruise ship. It's just a boat. And that is an important distinction for the church to remember. But size is not the only difference between cruise ships and the wooden boats of the ancient world. Here are five others. First, people who travel by cruise ship are passengers, a very passive role. All the important decisions and all the work are handled by others, trained professionals called the crew. Ancient mariners on a boat, however, were not passengers. They were the crew. Raising sails, tying knots, pulling oars. If they didn't know how to do such tasks, they watched and learned from others. If they hoped to get anywhere, they had to share both the work and the decisions. Second, passengers on a modern cruise ship all pretty much do their own thing. Some play shuffleboard while others shop. Some stay in the rooms, darn it, cabins. 
and read while others attend classes and lectures. Some swim while others nap. On a boat, it's not like that. Raising sails and navigating by the stars takes not just work, but teamwork. With no sonar or compass, ancient mariners carried ravens with them and released them into the sky. The crew would then assemble on deck, got it right that time, and search the skies for signs of the black birds that would lead them to land. Ancient mariners had to learn to work together. Otherwise, they were quite literally sunk. Third, passengers on a cruise ship dine at separate tables. They not only shared the food, but worked together to prepare the meal and then clean up afterward. Mixing was not optional. Fourth, modern passengers are entertained. In fact, the only mission of cruise ship passengers is to find ways to amuse themselves as they travel from port to port. They go to Broadway-style shows, watch movies, or attend talks at the lecture hall, all in hopes of being entertained. Those aboard an ancient boat entertained themselves. When the day's work was done, they gathered together to share tall tales, true stories, and body jokes. How else could they get through all those long, dark nights as their boat drifted along? Finally, fifth. It doesn't take much courage to sign up for a cruise. Typically, the gravest potential dangers are gaining 10 pounds from the buffet or twisting an ankle on the dance floor. In ancient days, however, the sea was terrifying. It was believed to be the one part of creation that had not been tamed by God. In an age when everyone believed in sea monsters and an earth so flat that you could sail right off the edge, it took guts to set sail in a creaky wooden boat. Ancient sailors had to trust in God and in each other. Clearly, getting the words right matters. Yet many in the church today do not seem to grasp the distinction between a ship and a boat. Sometimes, for instance, church members act as though the pews were deck chairs, a comfortable place to sit and watch while others teach children, study scripture, visit the sick, and befriend the poor. Thankfully, the church is not a cruise ship. It is a boat where all can be transformed by working together. Sometimes church members divide into groups with children, singles, young and old adults, each sequestered and doing their own thing. Sunday school classes often share nothing more than a hallway. Conservatives huddle on the starboard side, liberals gather on the port, Thankfully, the church is not a cruise ship. It is a boat where all can be reconciled, trusting that our shared love of God is greater than our differences. Sometimes church members forget that we are called not merely to coexist, but to mix together in joyful fellowship. Thankfully, we share a common table of bread and cup. There we kneel together and receive from the same bounty of grace. Sometimes church members act like consumers in search of entertainment, shopping around for prayers, snappy tunes, and comfortable messages. Thankfully, the church is a worshiping community, united in purpose, the glory of God. Volunteers come together to place the flowers, share the anthems, and welcome guests, all with the understanding that in worship, we are not the audience God is. Sometimes church members take their vows of membership lightly, as though church were just a pleasant social club or an easy weekly routine. Thankfully, the church is a witnessing community dedicated to making disciples, and nobody can be a disciple without taking a few risks. Weekly, we remind each other that following Christ takes more than faith hope, and love than any of us could muster on our own. When it comes to the church, the stained glass window has it right. It's not a ship. It's a boat. 
I hope you enjoyed that article as much as I did. I thought it was a wonderful starting point for our study this week. So it has some very nice ideas that we'll be able to discuss in our Zoom group or you can just think about on your own or talk to with your partner. Um, and we also, the, the next portion will be the study and that is you're going to be reading uh, Mark 1. It's the first chapter, verses 16 through 20 only. Just a few few chapter, just a few verses from chapter one, and this is on Jesus calling his disciples. And so I would ask that you would go ahead and do that and look at your questions ahead of time. Again, if you're working on your own, that's fine. But remember, there is a Zoom group that is meeting at 930 on Sunday mornings, and we have a lot of fellowship time. And then we will be doing getting to the study as well and looking at these questions. And dis we'll be discussing that business about the church being a boat rather than a ship and hearing what people have to say. Um, after you finish that, the next thing I have for you for your virtual tour, you'll see that there is another little video that's only about 10 minutes long. It's on the 10 most amazing churches around the world, and I hope you enjoy it very much. Um, I know I loved it. There's some very interesting ones there. And finally, as we are looking at the ocean theme and the church being a boat, I thought what better hymn to look at this week for the words to reflect on before we close in prayer would be the Navy hymn, Eternal Father Strong to Save. So um, I do encourage you to go ahead and listen to that, um, or rather to read those words, and uh, maybe you'll want to try to look it up, find it on uh, YouTube or something. Um, but God bless you all, and I'll look forward to our discussion group on Sunday morning. If you'd like to join us and you haven't given me your name, uh, do let me know so that I can make sure you get that invitation. God bless you all. Bye-bye.